right there. And he had some opportunities in the fight. Clayman would try to finish this fight on a strong note against ATN, using his hands and combinations. But in the end, when the judges' cards were tallied, ATN, the busier fighter of the two, would come away with a 10-round decision. After a couple of victories, Lawrence Clayman stepped into the ring against Cedric Fields in his last fight. That was on Friday Night Fights. Stepped in against Cedric Fields and dismantled him. Clayme has an opportunity to make himself better known tonight. And when I get in there, I, I come to fight. And, you know, the fans, they love action. And I think I bring that. And uh, as long as you're in front of the camera and you're performing well, you know, they're going to want you to come back. So I think uh, with my performances, it stands out a little bit more than others. So that's, that's what's going to keep my name out there and bring me to the next level. First, he has to get past Charles Schubert from Las Vegas, Nevada, the 29-year-old who was born in Virginia, has 19 wins as a pro and nine knockouts. He stepped up in class. His most impressive win came against Lamont Brewster a couple of years ago. He stepped into the ring and really tested himself against Vladimir Klitschko in August of last year. Schubert had to deal with the size and not only the power, but the speed right there from Klitschko. This fight was over in the sixth round. After a win against Marcellus Brown in a 13 and a half month layoff, Schubert stepped into the ring in his last fight on October the 13th of last year against Elisir Castillo, the former Cuban amateur who's a southpaw could not deal with Schubert's slick style. Schubert likes to move, use his hand speed and box. So what does Schubert expect when he steps into the ring tonight against Claybag? Well, I know Clayman is a good boxer. He can punch. He's quick. He's got a lot of good skills. You know, kind of. I know him from the amateurs. We've been the amateur together. And um, so, basically, I want to try to box him. Use my jab and my foot movement and hand speed and see if he can deal with that. Uh, he's a good. He's a pretty good boxer. He likes to. You know, he's mobile. He likes to move a lot. And you know, he, st he stays behind his jab. But uh, you know, we 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 uh, we really practice and train on countering a lot of the things that he does well to see, you know, to try to get him to do something different. Make him, to make it uncomfortable for him. So we are getting set for our main event here on Friday Night Fights, presented by Miller Light from Norman, Oklahoma. Charles Schubert has made his way into the ring with Lawrence Claybay, 254 pounds, 29 years of age, out of Las Vegas, 19 and two with nine knockout wins. In his last five fights, he has the loss to Vladimir Klitschko. He has a 13 and a half month layoff, had a shoulder problem after the loss to Klitschko. Teddy Atlas, the keys for Charles Schubert. Well, this is a very close fight on paper. For Schubert to win, first of all, he better use his size and his jab. You're bigger, take advantage with distance and the jab to keep the range. Number two, use the ring. Keep the fight in the middle of the ring where you can control Clay Bay and have the distance to counterpunch. And number three, Spot up the uppercut. It can be effective as the shorter Clay Bay comes in or when in close, he just covers up. Lawrence Clay Bay represented the United States at the 1996 Olympic Games. He was a world champion in 1995 and a two-time USA champion. 254 pounds, 37 years of age. Got a late start in the pro game. 17-1, 13 knockouts. Coming off the win against Cedric Fields on Friday Night Fights. Also on ESPN2, a win against Brian Nix. Teddy Atlas, the keys for Clay Bay. Well, for Clay Bay, very important fight in his career as it is for Schubert. If Clay Bay's gonna win, win, don't wear the earmuffs too long. You like to cover up and then like to work the counters off that cover. But you do it too long. You do it too long, you're gonna lose control of the fight, rhythm of the fight. Number two, get the spots out. You put punches together well, but you do it at best in spots. Get rid of those spurts. Be consistent offensively. Number three near not from afar get close don't let Schubert, who's taller use his reach get in and work combinations so we're getting set for the start of our main event gerald ritter the twin brother of the referee from earlier this evening gary ritter you see that Schubert has the height advantage against clay bay unified rules will be used for our main event this evening no three knock down rule no standing against camp fighter cannot be saved with the bell on any round Accidental foul will go to the scorecards after four, a count of four rounds are complete. Lawrence Claybay's father, James, who passed away in 1993, boxed for a short time as a pro, 
At age 20, Lawrence was 275 pounds. He needed to lose some weight. He never dreamed he'd be an Olympian or a professional. After the Olympic Games, he got rid of all his boxing gear. He had a job as a corrections officer in Hartford. And he started watching some of his former 1996 Olympic teammates and guys he beat the amateurs doing well in the program. He said, you know what? I'm going to give that a shot. And that's why Lawrence Claybay, at the age of 37, is trying to embark upon a late professional career. Both these fighters like to fight in spots, in spurts. Whoever can make their spots or spurts a little longer, I believe, will carry the fight. And where those spots come from? Do they come from the inside? That would favor the man punching right now, the shorter man, Clayton. If they come from the outside, that would favor Schufer. Schufer is trained by his father. Schufer has had his father as his coach, not only in boxing, but all the way back to Little League Baseball and TV football, right through high school. His dad has always been one of his coaches. And he said that's why their relationship as a father-son boxer trainer has worked. He said because it's not limited to just boxing. This is a good matchup to me on paper. Very interesting and close matchup. Coming down the stretch might be the telling. Schufer doesn't look concerned about the early rounds. Seems like he just wants to get a gauge of play, but come up, not get caught anything, get distance, take a good look at what he's going to be doing later, and maybe see if Clay Bay, who's at the heaviest weight of his career, runs out of gas a little bit later on. That's been a problem with Clay Bay. Very talented. Well, you just talked about what an amateur he was, Olympic representative, but he turned pro at 236. And he's fluctuated too much. His last fight he was 252, which was the heaviest, 16 pounds heavier than when he turned pro. And tonight he's even heavier, 254, the heaviest of his career. Now his argument is, this camp, they feel that they're trying to just keep him strong, and that he doesn't care about cutting the weight. But they're not wild about that argument. Well, to me, it doesn't look like a guy you have to worry about being bulimic. I mean, it's one thing being a little bit heavier, but you're talking about 18 pounds heavier than when he turned pro, which was a good 236. You know, you're not talking about a guy that's right on the edge, you know, that says, okay, give him a few more pounds, won't be strong. You're talking about 18 more pounds. He needs 18 more pounds? And that was four and a half years ago. And I have to start to wonder. And it's not as if he was 21 when he turned pro. He turned pro at 32. Final seconds of round number one. Both guys feeling each other out as Clayman misses a bomb. Schedule for 10. Doesn't Miller Lite taste great? Yeah, but I drink it because it's less filling. Great taste. Less filling! Great taste! Who wouldn't want to watch that? <laughs> Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. Let's make out. Yeah, I have acid reflux disease. I still get a little heartburn, but it's nothing serious. Even if you have just a little heartburn from acid reflux disease, you could have serious damage to your esophagus. What do you do? Call this number now or ask your doctor about a medicine that can stop the heartburn and start the healing. Don't wait to get serious about your heartburn. Call toll-free 800-498-9868. Round number two underway for Lawrence Clayman in the blue and Charles Schubert in the black trunk. Scheduled for 10, obviously heavyweights in the ring here in Norman, Oklahoma. Now you can join us for our first ESPN 2 Friday Night Fights in 2003. See Clay Bay drastically outworking Schubert in round one. Schubert puts those earmuffs on, which I talked about the tips of the fight. He's putting them on a little too long. When he puts those earmuffs on like he does right there, it's not a matter of what Clay Bay can do. It's a matter of how much Clay Bay wants to do. He can go to the body. He can flubby inside. He can work. He can score. He can create opportunities. It's just a matter of how ambitious, and as you said earlier in the night, how consistent he is. Schufer played George Foreman 
It's going to be Ali, sorry, Will Smith. He really doesn't fight the same way as Foreman. So that you want to move, use a little hand speed to be more of a boxer. Right now, Shuka's not using any hand speed. Barely throwing punches. All these fighters allow you to have moments where you can outwork them. Right now, Shuka is giving more of those moments away. When he covers us, puts the earmuffs on, and allows you, by handcuffing himself, allows you to go to work. And you don't have to worry about incoming, because when he's standing still blocking, you know he's handcuffed. It's not like he's making you miss and there's an opening created, and you got to worry when you throw something, you're going to expose yourself, you have to get out of there. You can sit in there when he's just blocking. You can feel comfortable. You can go from a two-punch combination guy to a six-seven-punch combination guy when you know a guy's just blocking. He said he was going to use the jab. He really has it. To this point. Shulton is doing nothing up to this point. One of the most important things, he's not using his height. He is not dictating geography. Not keeping the shorter clay bay outside, where he can use that jab you just talked about. Can't use the jab if clay bay is inside, in his kitchen. Clay bay doubles up his jab, gets inside, and shoots a hook to the body. Corner of Shuka yelling to him to work. Shuka it simple. Shuka's personality has always been to be technically solid and safe, converse, conservative. He's taking that to another level right now. That opens up a little bit as we end round number two. Well, next week here on Friday Night Fights, we'll get a look at the back. Connecticut. Oh, he can. A lot of them out there, but this is a good start. Muhammad Abdullayev, gold medalist from the 2000 Olympics, undefeated as a junior welterweight, comes at you very pleasing. Kermit Sintron, welterweight, local guy from Jersey, I believe he's from Jersey, undefeated. Guy to watch. And Nate Campbell, who's going to be fighting Casimir now, coming up. He's a guy undefeated, comes at you, throws a lot of punches, real willing guy. I don't know how he's going to do with Casimir, but he's a guy to watch. And Deval Williamson, who you just said we got fighting next week, he's got power in that right hand. He's a guy who can make a little bit of noise. And the last guy, Jeffrey Russell, one of the best prospects, I believe, out of New York right now, undefeated junior welterweight. Those are just some of the people on Teddy's list. And Teddy, we start round number three, Schubert. At six foot three, has the height advantage against Clay Bay. And so far in this fight, Schubert has only landed seven of 36 jabs. Only 36 jabs through two rounds. In fact, Clay Bay in the last round threw as many jabs as Schubert threw in the entire round. I said the key would be who fights in the longest spots and where those spots are. So far, the one who's going longer in the spots is Clay Bay. And he's getting the spots in the area he wants, in close. Well, she should yell, speed, speed. As he said, she needs to start establishing distance. And that starts with the jab, which he's not using. Warner Schubert continues to yell, speed, speed. Schubert not moving his hands. How about just punches, punches? Anything slow, medium, or fast would do for me right now. I wouldn't be that choosy right now. But in his own corner, he's saying what you're saying. I'm sure fans watching at home are saying, come on, Charles, a couple punches here. That's all. Right. That's all. It's not like he's not being given the opportunity to do that. Clay Bay is not in his real house, the term you like to use. He's outside, giving him opportunities to dictate distance, to dictate control, and use the jab. Well, he's allowing Clay Bay to fight at a pace. It's perfect for him. 
Very good point, Bob. Part of Schubert's plan is for Clay Bay, his heaviest weight so far in his career, to wear down. It's not going to work. He allows him to go at a leisurely pace. Both fighters give each other plenty of opportunities to score and to capture rounds. Neither one consistent offensively in fighting spots. The inside spots belong to Clayback. Now, Schubert's not going to use that jab, which is the most obvious weapon for him to use. He should start getting ready to use that uppercut to make sure that Clayback comes forward. West Casino in Norman, Oklahoma. ESPN 2's Friday Night Fight presented by Miller Lite. Bob Hoppins, Eddie Atlas, Rent Side, Lawrence Claybay in the blue. Charles Schubert in the black trunks. And Schubert got a tongue lashing from his father, a trainer, in between rounds three and four. Basically, he's just saying, you're just sitting there doing nothing. He's giving away too many rounds early, is what he said. But it's not doing it. I agree with him. Although I gave the last round. The first round tonight that he's gotten on my scorecard to shoot him. Not I. I gave it to Clayton. Excuse me. Punches through three rounds. Clay Bay throwing 106 more punches. Teddy has a two rounds to one. I have a three zip for Clay Bay. Just on the punch out, sir. Just on the work. Now, as I mentioned, it's who sustains the spots? The spurts longer and from where? Right now we're in Clay Bay's territory. He needs to sustain the offensive action every time he's in close. Because if Schubert gets on the ball later on and starts doing the things he needs to do on the outside, Clay Bay's gonna need these rounds and these moments he gets in close. Clay likes to go to the body and then work on that body with an uppercut. And that could be a good weapon of choice with Schubert. Because he keeps those earmuffs on. And there's an opening to split the gloves right up the middle. You can see the way he keeps his gloves and he doesn't move his head. So around his sides, he will block. But up the middle with the uppercut, he can score cleanly. Clay Bay could be vulnerable to the uppercut too. He's shorter. Come straight in, leans a little. See, to employ the defensive methods that Schubert's employing, he's not moving his head, as I said earlier. So it's not like he makes you miss. It makes you worry after you miss where you can't put punches together. There's some scoring by Schubert, some counter punching, using his height a little bit. But with Schubert, since he doesn't move his head, it's not like he makes you miss and then you worry about leaving yourself open. You can sit in there like Now, what he has to do with that kind of style, he's going to employ that kind of method, and he's just going to come up. As soon as he blocks, he needs to fire right back. He's doing a little more now. Yeah, he tried to shoot that right hand, and he just missed with it. That's some sleeping pill. Mmm, herbal. There's something about herbal essences. The fragrance. The natural botanicals. Yes! It wakes up. Yes! Every part of you. Whoa! <laughs> herbal essences. Growing in numbers. full from his corner. John Scully and Al Mitchell. Mitchell, a former U.S. Olympic coach. About the lack of passion that Clay Bay showed in the last round, Teddy. 
good people in that corner. He should listen to him. Al Mitchell, as you said, former Olympic coach, the amateur team also, former trainer of David Reed, former junior middleweight champion of the world. John Scully is an active fighter, good kid. A guy that looks like he's gonna be a good fan. Al Mitchell is the coach of the 1996 United States boxing team that competed in Atlanta, Georgia. David Reed won the gold. Antonio Carver picked up the bar. Did a nice job with that. Yes, he did. Matt Burns was an assistant. Jesse Ravel, the other assistant. Teddy, this fight is there for the take for both guys. Who is more ambitious will be the victim? He wants it more. As you said, both lend themselves to each other. They give each other opportunities. Right now, Clay Bay missing out on an opportunity. He's in close. As a shorter man, he wants to be. He's not working enough. You can see Shooter, his personality, his style is the counterpart. And every time he gets a little space, he tries to get Clay Bay to reach just a little bit where he can fill the hole, fill the spot. Even in here, put up a good choice there by Clay Bay, trying to cut it up the middle, split those gloves of Shooter. But even inside, Shooter's always looking for Clay Bay to move his hand back a little bit so he can punch in between. Both fighters, as we mentioned earlier, give the other an opportunity to outwork, out hustle. Them. And again, the strategy, the defensive way that Shuford goes about his business to just cover up, not to move his head, it is really incumbent on him to make sure he doesn't just cover up too long and let Clay Bay put too many punches together. He must block and pitch. A slug from the nose of Clay Bay. There's a left hand to the body to shoot from a little low. He follows it up with a left hook to the head. Shoot is starting to put some punches together. They're in round number five. Well, Oklahoma is known for producing great football players and, of course, greats like Mickey Mantle, the Commerce Comet, but also some outstanding boxers. Brian Kenny has more. Bob, indeed, would go back now with. February 11, 1991. At this point, Attilus uh, passed his prime. Yeah, no, Attilus came up as a real legitimate prospect, and uh, by the mid-80s, it was clear that he wasn't going to fulfill his potential. This is the early 90s already, and he was essentially fed to Tommy Morrison, who really had a tremendous left hook and delivered it quickly and accurately. I mean, look, even in that Mercer fight, Morrison was winning the fight and ran out of gas, let's not forget. And he didn't look good, of course, against Lennox Lewis, but as we subsequently learned, very few fighters have looked good against Lennox yeah, Lewis. That doesn't really happen unless you get lucky with the right hand. There's Tommy Morrison again, January 11th, 1991, out of J, Oklahoma. Go back to Norman, Oklahoma, to Bob and Teddy, guys. All right, younger fans might recognize him as a broadcaster, but Sean O'Grady, former WBA lightweight champion with his wife, Robin. An Oklahoma native catching the action here at ringside. Real gentleman, Sean, does a good job behind the mic as well as you just mentioned. Finished his career at 81 and 5 with 70 knockouts. Won his world title in 1981 against the former front fighter, Hillway Kenton. Hey, Shuford got some things done in the last round as Clay Bay unloads the right hand. In fact, in the last round, it was the first round, according to CompuBox, that Shuford outlanded Clay Bay. Shuford's starting to warm up, wake up, get interested, get ambitious. Now, the difference in nutrition, the condition, maybe will start to show. Clay Bay, as we said, coming in as heavy as of his career. Shooter starting to pick up the punch load and the work rate. This fight might come down to condition. Well, here comes Charles Shooter. Takes a left hook to the body and then goes up top. 
all fighters give the opportunities for the other to get off. You don't have to look for them. You don't have to find them. They're right in front of you. Jupiter's not a big hitter, though. And here comes Clayton, who has more power. And both fighters, as we said earlier, fighting in spots. And the shooter, now it's Clay Bay looking for the spot. This is what Clay Bay must not allow to happen. Get tied up, smothering himself in close. He needs to carry it on the inside. If Shufin gets on his game like he's starting to, and gets interested like he looks like he's beginning to be, Clay Bay can't count on a lot on the outside. The Shufin has the advantage if he wants to take it on the outside. They just backs away. Both fighters give the other an opportunity to refuel, regas, regroup. And this round could come down to these last 20 seconds. Rounds can be stolen in this kind of fight. You're absolutely right. Closes of rounds, finishing of rounds. Could be tantamount in the scoring in this fight. Super just pawing out with his jab. This Craftmatic Model 2 electrically adjustable bed costs no more than many quality flat beds. And when you buy selected ones with... Clay Bay was able to control the action. In the last three rounds, Schubert started throwing punches. And now he is surged back in this fight a little bit. According to CompuBox in the last two rounds, Schubert has outlanded Clay Bay 39 to 19 in connects over the last two rounds. You see the edge for Schubert in round six. Clay Bay's where he wants to be. In close. It's a matter of him working when he's in there. All right, let's go to the corner of Charles Shuford and his father. Charles Shuford Sr. joins us. Charles, Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas. Uh, it seems that when Charles puts his punches together, Clay Bay is very hittable. And we know you've been yelling at him to throw more punches. Would you like to see that punch output go up a little more? He just got to work and put the punches together. Get more confidence in himself. He ain't fighting with confidence. He's not fighting with confidence. He's much better than what he's showing here. Charles, is that why he got his? Is that why he got his slow start because of that? Got it so what? Is that why he started so slow? I guess so. I guess so. I guess so that's what I'm thinking too. But I know he can hook this guy. He's got to. I he's got to work though. He's got to work. He's, he's got to work. Boy, gotta be here. You're right. Get back in this thing, boo. Get back behind those floor, baby. All right, Charles. Thank you very much and best of luck. Hey, he's been saying it from the beginning, Teddy. His own son. He's got to work. And we've been saying from the beginning, this fight is about spots. And both fighters giving each other those spots. Both fighters allowed to recover. Allowed to be grouped. A little left off there. Yeah, good left hook counter there from Shuka. Got the attention, as you said, of Clayback. Why does he let Clay Bay take these walks? I would go right after him. I think his father said it well. Confidence or lack of. People wouldn't think that when they see guys in a ring with gloves on. But they're like any other human being. They have their inhibitions. They have their doubts. They have their insecurities. We look at it from the outside and say, the opportunities are there. Why is Shukri not doing more? When he's just feeling a certain way, and the way he feels, tell us how he sees things and he sees things very differently than we do you would think every time play base starts turning and walking away i would just go right after him. you're right a lot of times what fighters see is not really honest or really true their feelings kind of control them you might think all alarm clock radios are the same but when the power goes out only
Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas, Norman, Oklahoma, Lawrence Claybay, Charles Schubert underway. Round number eight, heavyweight scheduled for 10. There have been no knockdowns so far in the fight. First three rounds to Clay Bay. Next three rounds, Schubert had the edge. Clay Bay maybe reassuming control a little bit in round number seven. but he's stemming the tide a little bit the last round, which I believe he needed to do after giving a couple of consecutive rounds to shoot him. But Holman's never lost in this fight because of the temperament and styles of both guys, Bob. They both allow each other the hope and the opportunity to get back in the fight. They only fight moments. All right, let's go to the corner of Lawrence Clay, the aforementioned John Scully, and uh, John Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas. It would seem that if Lawrence just became more consistent with his punch output, uh, Schubert is giving him a lot of opportunities. That's the thing. We're trying to push him to, to back the kid up. Lawrence is mainly a boxer, but this kid is a boxer, too, and it kind of offsets Clay's style a little bit. And to be honest with you, his the other guy's lack of power kind of lulls Clay to sleep a little bit. Come on, you know, I need him to the guy a little bit more and take it to him. Listen, just, John, is Lawrence in top position? I'll tell you, like, when I first started working with him, the knock on him was that he was lazy, but this guy works harder than, than almost every, certainly harder than any heavyweight I've ever seen. I mean, he really does work hard. If anything, as you would understand, Ted, sometimes he overtrains and he gets kind of weak, you know? And uh, if anything, I've tried to hold him back from certain things. This week, we didn't run for like the last three days, you know? Come on, come on, is that as heavy as weight? Is that a concern? Um, not particularly, because when he was lighter before, I mean, he really killed himself like a middleweight would. And, uh, you know, I can't see why a heavyweight would right do that, because he would come into the gym and just be dead. And, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense for a big man to do that. The spots are there for both guys. It's just a matter of who takes them. Right. I think... I think Clay, um, I think the other guy, to be with you, is taking chances because Clay isn't sometimes. I think if Clay took it to him more, the guy wouldn't really respond that well. All right, John, thank you very much. Best of luck. Thank you. All right, John Scully, summed it up for you there a little bit, Teddy. He's an active fighter. He's, he's a tough guy. He's fought a lot of good fighters. And he's becoming a good trainer. He knows what's going on. Well, you got to take his word as far as the training. About Clay Bay's work ethic, I mean, he really gave a lot of props there. Yes, he did. Shoot for allowing Clay Bay to just take a little stroll in the park. Sometimes you see the guy moving their hands a lot. I was looking for a great deal, so I talked to a good friend of mine. Emmett was desperate. That's when after. Behind the jab and dig to the body. And just box this kid. Stay behind the jab, okay? When you need punch to the body, time up after you finish. Put your punch together. Short and hard. Short, good shot. Three punch combination. When you two rounds, you gotta fight to win it. All right, concern in the clay bag camp. Uh, I have him ahead by a couple of points, but it could be either way. There should be concern in both camps. Well, we heard from Charles Schubert Sr. earlier, he was just saying. Because this is a close fight, which we said on paper, figured to be an interesting fight. And a fight where both fighters allow each other an opportunity, as you said very well, to steal the rounds, to steal the fight. Well, we heard Al Mitchell say when you ain't close, three punches together, three or three punches. And they did not there. Again, I'm going to say, if you're Schubert and you employ the strategy and technique he employs, which is to put the earmuffs on and to block, not to move your head, not to create openings, but to just block, it is incumbent on you not to stay there and block too many. You have to have a punch count in your head. You block one, boom, you gotta come right back. Like you did there. You block one, boom, you gotta come back with two. Oh. And on the outside, Schubert, the taller man, should be using that jab. 
Now that's that's a dead issue at this point. Uh, Absolutely. In round six, he landed 11 of 22. You know, in the round, as he landed more than five jabs. You know, even though it's a dead issue, there's two rounds left. The fight is very close, at least on all scorecards. He can still grab these rounds just by working on the outside, super. Just working on the outside with his jab. And that can be the difference in this closer fight. And of course, Clayface can win the fight by just getting inside and shoe shining. Being busier. Being more active. I thought Schufer was the one who did it. Clayface was where his camp said to be, and they said throw a three punch combination. It didn't happen. Bottom line, from what we said right from the beginning, both guys only fight sporadically. Whoever can elongate their offensive moments will carry this win. Or steal this win. This is a fight that's just begging to be stolen. Oh yeah. It's there for both guys. Right now they're both sort of going about the work as if they're looking for a draw. So they've already got five world titles in the draw. And millions of dollars in the bank. I don't think either one has. There's the bell to end round number nine. We'll take it to the corner of Charles Schuper. by 12 punches through the nine rounds. 112 to 100. They may have been busier. Close fight. This fight is a bit just about what we figured it would be. Close and spotty. But interesting. Interesting trying to figure out why one guy doesn't work and sustain his work when he has the opportunity to do it. And interesting why each guy allows the other to have their moments. They shoot for blocking. But what we see and what they feel in their minds under pressure is two different things. We see things clearly, they're in there under pressure. They see things the way their pressure allows them to see, to see things. Teddy has Schubert up by a point. I have Claybay up by a point, 86-85. That's why it's an interesting fight. <laughs> Very often when a fighter's under pressure, he doesn't see the opportunity. Sometimes he doesn't want to see it. Even though it's corner, and you and I can see it. People who handle pressure the best, they usually are the ones that can function the best. The body work from Schubert. You hear it all the time, Bob, but really, really true right now. This kind of round is really important. I have 60 seconds to grab this round. And neither fighter acting with any real urgency. 
Don't get me wrong, I understand you don't want to be careless and just walk in there, but it's not like you're walking into a, you know, a mill store here. You need a guy. They both give you opportunities to work, and right now, Shufik taking a little bit more advantage. And it's not as if both corners haven't been stressing that all night. Well, Shufik is grabbing a little bit of control here in the last minute, but can he finish the minute out? Right now, the conditioning factor might be playing into it a little bit for Clayback or the lack, if there is a lack of conditioning. But Shufa having a little bit of a better round here. Well, especially the last minute of this last round, Shufa was the busier of the two. Is that enough to tip it in his favor? There's the bell to end it. Clayback and Shufa wrap up their 10-round showdown. Both guys spotty. Both corners demanding more work. Close fight. We'll get the judges' cards after this timeout. ABC's good morning. of his power shots in the fight. Teddy Atlas's scorecard reads as follows. 96-94 for Schufer. I had it a draw, five rounds apiece. Time for the judges' scorecards as we send it up to our ring announcer, Jeff Connor. And another loud round of applause for our combatants in this, the main event at the Thunderbird Wild Wild West Casino. The judges' scorecards are in. Judge Gary Ritter sees the fight 96-94. Judges Miller and Marshall see it 97-93. All for the winner by unanimous decision, Lawrence Clayby. So one judge had it six rounds to four, and the other two judges had it seven rounds to three. We'll be talking to Lawrence Clayby. I thought it was a little closer than that, but Clayby, a unanimous decision victory. At times, it plotted along, but he does get the win against Shuford. We'll talk to Lawrence Clayby, but first we send it back to Brian and Max. Well, Max, two guys uh, at a very similar level, and yet yeah, Clayby a little crisper, but barely got this win. They shouldn't be at a similar level, though. Clayby is, is a better fighter than Shuford. To take nothing away from Shuford, he's a big guy. Uh, he stays busy. He's busy at times against Clayby. But Clayby should not be awaiting a decision wondering, uh, am I sure I got this decision right now against a guy like Shuford? You know, you watch Clay Bay fight, even as an amateur, by the time he was in an advanced stage of his amateur career, he was like 30 years old. So even as an amateur, uh, it was, you know, he's a little too old to really make hay in the heavyweight division. But when you watch Clay Bay fight, you get the feeling, at least I do, here's a guy who lacks the passion, who boxes because he's too good not to box, and yet lacks the passion really to optimize, to maximize, to fulfill his potential. Yeah, you watch them early on. We were watching the, the first few rounds. I said, wow, look at those punches. So crisp. I mean, everything is very fluid. What would he do when he steps up? I mean, inevitably, if he beats this level fighter, now as Cedric Fields, Charles Shuford, where's the next step up where he can't get hurt? Well, yeah, at this point, it's uh, someone like that. I mean, you know, he fought ATN, and ATN out-hustled him and won a great fight on points. Uh, it, and I just want to get back to, to his amateur career for one second, because even then, he was coming in 220, 230, he's a super heavyweight, but he's only 6'1", and yet it didn't make a whole lot of sense for him to train down to a real svelte 210 or something, because he wasn't going to do anything as a 210-pound heavyweight. He was just caught in a kind of a funny super heavyweight era, little too short, little too old, and, and on top of all that, lacked the, dr lacked the drive, and yet he's still an entertaining fighter to watch. Uh, Bob and Teddy, uh, we hope to get an interview with Clay Bay out in a few moments. First, a programming note. Again, it's an uh, NFL playoff weekend, and you can start it on Sunday NFL Countdown. That is tomorrow, though, special edition. It's on Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Stuart Scott will be your host of the latest on the Bill Parcells story as well. Colts and Jets on ABC, 4.30 Eastern Time. Jets dismantled the Packers in the final game to get in. And then Michael Vick at Lambeau again. The fight, you really seize control. Then it almost seems as if you fell into a little bit of a lull and this thing got a little closer. Uh, can you talk about why 
Schufer was having some success in the middle rounds? Uh, uh, Schufer, you know, he's a, he's a mover. It's kind of hard to fight a defensive fighter. As the rounds progressed, I got a little fatigued. You know, this is the first, you know, I haven't went this, the distance in a while. So it was a lot of rust, um, you know, but uh, I imposed my will on him. I kept coming at him, kept throwing punches, and got the victory. That's the most important thing right now. Uh, that was the heaviest weight of your career so far. Was that something to do with your fatigue? getting tired later could no, you have I been really, in better shape I, I definitely can be you can always be in better shape um no nah, i'm not going to use my weight as any excuse uh, like i said i think it was uh, just a matter of you know getting rounds in you know i haven't had a lot of rounds all my fights are in early and you know i had to push through it it was it was more of a struggle of, with myself than with super uh i got hit with a lot of silly shots you know just being careless but uh you know like i said the most important thing is we got to win and we go home and we we work work even harder ray leonard do uh, you promote Lawrence Clay what's the next step for Lawrence? Well, the, the fact of the matter is he won the fight, but it wasn't as impressive as I wanted it to be. He didn't throw enough punches. He didn't dominate like I thought he would. He should have. But uh, he went the rounds. The distance made a difference. So, we you know, we take a break and we go from there. Does the fact that Shuford wasn't able to hurt you when he did hit you with clean shots almost lull you into a sense that I, I, I can take so. it at any time? I think time? so. That's, a, that's an ongoing problem, uh, something that we've been trying to work on in the gym. Uh, it's just something that, you know, mentally I have to, you know, focus and, and concentrate harder on getting breaking. All right, Lawrence, happy new year. Thanks for joining Same us. Same to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, Lawrence Claybay gets a unanimous decision victory against Charles